Obamacare was in the uh, sights of the Supreme Court over the past three days. Now it is in their hands to decide what is going to happen next. And uh, as of right now, there are a lot of folks saying it looks like uh, it's not going to be such good news for the president. Uh, Dr. Paige Powell with the UAB School of Health Professions is with us here on Birmingham's Morning News. Uh, let's assume for a moment that things go the way that the president would like to see, and it's upheld. What would that mean? What sort of changes would I see for me and my family, you know, your average family of four, coming over the next couple of years? Well, first of all, Scott, thanks for having me here. Um, for you and your family, since you work for a company like Clear Channel, most likely you wouldn't see many changes. However, people who work for small employers, um, chances are they wouldn't be able to afford um, all of the benefits that are mandated under the law, and so they might shift employers more to the individual exchanges. Um, people who can't afford insurance right now, the law is a benefit for them because they would be able to afford insurance on the exchange. Um, but people who are young and healthy would also then be mandated to purchase insurance on the exchange. Okay. That's if the law is upheld. Clarify for me, you just said for right now, people who can't afford insurance would be able to afford it through the exchange. What does that mean? If they can't afford it now, uh, how affordable would it be then? Well, if the individual mandate is upheld, what it does is it forces young, healthy people to purchase insurance, and they subsidize the sicker people, sure. which brings down the premiums. And that's at the crux of the matter of the debate. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say the individual mandate is thrown out, and for however it would work out, the rest of it stands. How would that work for me and my family? And let's assume I need to get my own insurance. Uh, that then would really make the insurance unaffordable, which comes to the heart of the severability argument, which... Um, if you still have what they call community rating, where everybody pays the same premium and guaranteed issue, where insurance companies have to make um, insurance available to everyone, then only the sick people are going to purchase insurance. And the premiums are going to be so high that most people wouldn't be able to purchase it. So the argument is, and many people think that, um, given yesterday's arguments, that um, most of the law would be struck down. Hmm. All right, let's take a look at the, let's say it is, is struck down here, then uh, are we going to see wholesale changes in the insurance industry moving forward, um, or do you think things will pretty much stay the status quo? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, I think a lot depends on um, the elections in November. Mm -hmm. um, I do think there need to be fundamental changes in the health insurance market, but I don't think that... Um, necessarily the current law is the best way to go about it. Okay. Doctor, again, I appreciate your time today. Dr. Paige Powell, Assistant Professor in the School of Health Professions uh, at UAB. 825, it is sports time. Rick Carley, what do you got for us?